This is where Jackson prepared for his comeback, in suburban Los Angeles, in a gym in Lou Ferrigno's back garden. Okay. And you know, you're doing sit up and crunchies because... These are the exercises that Lou gave Jackson, rolling on a ball and lifting a big rubber band. But you just love being here and... Uh, well, that's the impression I get, Lou. To be honest, to me, it seems as though he really liked your company and that he really liked being here. And that somehow the workout, he could have done the workout, that kind of workout himself, couldn't he? But maybe it, he just wanted to be, maybe he just wanted to hang out with you. It's more, it's like that too, it's the motivation. And because in here, it's very safe. Yeah. There's no cameras, there's no people taking pictures, it's him and I, it's so safe. Meeting Lou, it seemed to me that Jackson was there to confide in him, not really to train at all. He was a huge fan of the Hulk because it's about power. He had that power to mute I had that power to the Hulk because every one of us is a little Hulk inside of us. Michael felt like the little Hulk. He told me because of all the pain and anger. Oh, he was excited because I asked him about, I, I asked him about the tour. He said he was not nervous. And I could see that he was like anxious to train, but he had so much pressure and the stress was humongous on him. I think that he was happier than he had been in years. The reports from the people who surrounded Michael is that he was extremely stressed. He was extremely upset about how the show was going. Take a close look at that movie. Michael Jackson is wearing three layers of shirts. The other dancers are all in their bare undershirts. He had chronic bronchitis and he was anemic. He was shivering cold at the rehearsals in the middle of summer. The closest people to him were very alarmed at what was happening to Michael. I was concerned about his weight and that he wasn't eating. And I actually brought in someone whose sole job it was to make sure he ate. He said he wasn't sleeping. And I, you know, and I said to him, well, what seems to be the problem? Well, I'm just excited, you know, I'm all wound up. We saw Michael Jackson deteriorating. We actually saw him more than a couple of times in Beverly Hills going into a doctor's office, and he would come out just out of it. He didn't like a person who was suffering from anorexia. He very muscular, and he was very, very happy in dancing. He danced in the office. Jackson reportedly slept in Klein's office, often for hours at a time. I've given him medication, yes, but you could take all the medication I gave him in a year right now and nothing would happen to you, okay? When was it that you met uh, and, and that he began asking you about the, the drug Diprovan. It was about three months ago. He said, I am so sleepy. I cannot sleep. He asked me if I could just spend the night with him. And so when I did that, and when I was there, he was sleeping really good. But in three hours, he woke up. And he said, now do you understand?
On Easter Sunday, April 12th, before Dr. Murray is hired, registered nurse Sherilyn Lee says she gets a frantic call from Jackson. She says he was begging her for propofol so he could sleep. She says she refused, knowing the drug should never be used outside a hospital setting. The next day, on June 22nd, Dr. Murray told police he tried to wean Jackson from propofol, giving him just 25 milligrams, along with a sedative and anti-anxiety drug. It was enough to put Jackson to sleep. On June 23rd, Murray says he gave Jackson Ativan and Versed, no propofol at all. Again, Jackson fell asleep. The next day, another rehearsal. It would be Jackson's last. He was so full out and so into the show that night and the night before that, those were our best two run-throughs of the show. The show was done and that goal had been reached. And so he left so excited and ecstatic. The last time I ever saw him at 12.30 a.m. in the morning, Thursday morning, he put his arm around me and he said to me in that kind of soft, lilting voice of his, he said, thank you for getting me here. I've got it now. I know I can do this. I'll take it from here. If you had told me that night that he would be gone the next day, I would have said you're crazy. Hold for applause, slow fade out. 